Hi everyone. In the last 10 to 12 days, I've been tracking the coronavirus, the Novo Coronavirus 2019, and I came up with a, a mathematical model. And today I want to just update you on the uh, several models actually I came up with now. Uh, the first model, the original one, um, it's actually breaking apart. Well, this is actually a good news. Uh, it's showing that China is actually recovering and the uh, E to the power, the power is actually decreasing and uh, it's decreasing and it's almost forming a linear pattern. Uh, as you can see here, if you look at model one, let me go back, there we go, this one here. Uh, currently, the uh, formula is 1050.32 times E to the exponent 0.154268 times day so today is day 12 and it predict about let me see let me show you the actual data here yeah so if you go down so you can see I've been doing a lot of um, calculation here um, it's showing that it's at 36,498 okay and it's changing quite rapidly so this model actually over time it, it, it doesn't work because it's assuming that uh, the growth is almost like doubling. But in fact, China is actually doing a good job and they're trying to decrease their uh, or containment. Anyway, they tried to contain the virus. Uh, and, and so far, the graph and the formula is showing that they're doing that. And I can see that it's actually forming a more like a, sigmo a sigmoidal curve. So it's kind of, like let me show you what I mean by that. It's actually peaking to uh, almost a plateau. So let me show you what a uh, sigmoidal curve look like. There we go, that's the sigmoidal curve. As you can see, we are somewhere around here now, okay, around here. So it look like it's actually trying to plateau. Um, according to my prediction, it looks like we'll probably reach that like around here, uh, almost pa plateau around end of February and early March, we should almost reach the plateau itself. So that's the prediction. And both three models seem to do that. The, the only problem is that the first model, let me show you again the, yeah, the first model is a bit aggressive and always get it wrong after uh, third day, okay? And it's because it's projecting exponentially, but actually the curve is kind of slowly coming to a, uh, a, a, a plateau. So actually model two um, is more accurate. As you can see, model two, based on the previous data, so for example, this is a, let's say you have a sample today. This X minus one is a sample yesterday times the rate that's changed. And the rate that's changed is actually decreasing exponentially. Okay, so that's what I did. Actually, I looked at, um, and what I did was I grabbed the, um, the data from, um, let me show you something here, from Wikipedia, which they actually track based on percentage, as you can see over here. It's going down from uh, 22, 19, and all the way down to 10.9. Now, um, the, so I start to see a pattern. I start to see that there is actually, it's actually de decreasing, and I want to know uh, how much it's decreased by. And ap apparently, it follows a um, exponential curve. Let me see if I can find it here. Let's go back to the original. Uh, yeah, oops. There it is, okay? So if you look at the, the formula itself, it's... Um, the previous uh, data, which is yesterday, times one point and that rate, which is 1.215 times e to the negative 0 0.1027 times a day, which today is day uh, 12, I believe. And you multiply that and you see the progression is actually curving down this way. Okay, so the expansion is decreasing and by day 40, it's almost 0 0.02 or 0 0.01. Um, Anyway, so the, the rate of change is decreasing and you multiply by the previous number and it seemed like this model seemed to work and seemed to predict, uh, I, I would say quite accurately within one or 2,000 and then eventually within a couple hundred cases, okay? So I think it's quite reliable. Now, remember these models are based on China stats because 99% of the case is in China and uh, we don't know for sure about other country, unless, uh, especially developing country, whether they actually uh, report it correctly. Um, the developing country, for example, to me seems like it's a very small uh, sample size and you can't use it right now. In fact, my model was based on the current model uh, stats 
from China and the more current it is the more accurate the model will sh predict okay so if you have a current data the trend will show uh, its progression if you have earlier data it's kind of random because you don't really know because uh, the data is just coming in and then um, it may not be correct collect uh, properly and so you get kind of like a randomized uh, data all over the place but once um, uh, you know it's uh, gathered uh, more efficiently then you'll see the pattern and it start forming so in China, for example, we can see that and it um, uh, seems to follow a p particular model and it's actually declining. Uh, in the other part of the world, I'm kind of uh, worried because um, it's just starting and when that means, just like China, it will start to exponentially increase if there is an infection and it will spread and eventually, hopefully, it's uncontained and it will kind of peak out as well, assuming that they're doing the same kind of level of um, control like China and it will work out. But according to Model 2, uh, it predicts that China should recover by end of February and early March. Okay, in other words, it will kind of plateau. The sigmoidal curve will kind of plateau out like that. And then you get, uh, you know, and I think I predict uh, around 30, uh, 55 to 65 uh, infective cases with a mortality uh, rate of 2.2 and it's um, uh, death which is kind of sad is like a 1200 uh, 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 death case will be based on this uh, 55,000 to 65,000 um, infected cases. Okay, so that's the projected model. And model three is actually the most accurate. The model three, as you can see, um, let me show you right now. This one here is basically average uh, of uh, any of these models. I actually have another model but um, it's not here, it's a bit more complicated. So model one, two, and then maybe model three as well. And you add those three model up. And you, it's kind of more like um, uh, the, the uh, statistician look at the data set and then they see which one matches the actual uh, progression. And so model three uh, may be a little bit biased because I'm actually selecting the data to fit the, 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 the graph. And so that's why model three seems to be the most accurate. But I think currently, uh, based on its own, Model 2 would be the best model just to predict the future. Whereas Model 3 is like taking samples like currently and then um, average it out. And then you can probably predict uh, quite accurately within two days, right? And by the way, these two, uh, three models, again, can't uh, predict with 100% 100 100 certainty that you'll get you know, what you get but it is uh, pretty accurate up to a couple of days like three four days up to three four days i think it's pretty accurate and you can see that um, <clears throat> based on model two and three again um we will uh the the infected case will probably peak out around 55 to 65 thousand uh, in cases and then a mortality uh, um, case would be around 1200 uh, death and um yeah and that just seems to be what I'm showing and that's a good news so it's actually slowing down the bad news of course is that um, other countries now uh, especially Singapore Thailand Japan uh, these uh, pretty well developed country uh, they are infected now Thailand on the other hand um, this is why I'm worried actually Thailand is the country I'm worried the most because that's the country where you have a lot of foreigners coming in and they're leaving out right and it's mainly a kind of like an entertainment center of the world and that's dangerous because when they go out, they could infect uh, uh, the homeland. So that's what the government had to be worried about. Thailand actually is the key there that people should worry about. And then Singapore, of course. And then, of course, Japan, I think they're pretty um, close-knitted. So I think it's not too bad. And they seem to be quite, uh, just like China, I think they can control that. But Thailand, on the other hand, I'm not sure. Um, and then, of course, other country that's not... I'm not reported yet no cases which i kind of worry because i'm not sure if they're not reporting or there is no case which is like africa and south america so that's something you got to be looking out for so currently i think uh, china is slowing down in terms of its um, infection so that's good news what's happening however is that the future cases in other country may exponentially grow just like china if it's not controlled this is why it's very important that we contain it within China. But again, you know about viruses. You know, the question you have to ask yourself is, uh, how long will this virus last? You know, would it be, you know, confined until every case in China is stopped? And would that be even possible? And then, and then you, you know, and then if any of these one cases infected, say, any of the member 
uh, in the future, and how long would that be? Are we, you know, even though if China, you know, kind of plateau around March, does that mean that China is safe for people to come and visit? Because we still have a few cases that may be infected, right? And again, how long would that linger on? How long would the virus stay in the body and stay in this host? Would it be a couple months afterwards, after March, or would it be another year? So we don't know that, and that's something pretty scary. Because once, um, say, a few of these uh, infected people uh, give to, say, any uh, other uh, member, and that could also cause... Um, you know, explosion in other countries in terms of its in, um, growth. So that's why I worry about the most. But it seems like um, using China as a model to predict the future is, is quite accurate. So we have now a model for China, and this is how it's controlled. Now, if it happens to other country, we can also do an, the same observation. The only problem is um, if the other countries is not as aggressive, the curve may be growing exponentially and not sigmoidal, right? Because what's going to happen if it's, un if it's not under control, it's just going to keep on going up, 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 just like what China did in the initial uh, first two weeks. And then eventually it tapered off because they really taper down, like control the, the people. But that's why I worry also aftermath because aftermath is that there'll be, a, I think there's going to be a lot of ethical issue regarding what they just did. Um, so that is something else you have to deal with. Uh, right now, they just want to control uh, the virus, but afterwards, I think there'll be a lot of complaint from their um, um, the, the, the citizen of China. So, uh, I think that will be another issue, and that's something that they have to dealt with. Meanwhile, other country will have to do the same uh, because, like I said, this virus has a 2.2 percent mortality rate, around there, around 2 percent to 3 percent, depending on the stats that you're looking at. Um, so that's still high because if you look at a common flu, it's 0.1 percent. And the thing is, I, what I dislike is a lot of people compare it to common flu, and that's not good to do that because um, what they say is that, of course, uh, this virus, for example, is like almost 22 times more infectious than a common flu. In addition, the the way it's spread is very fast. Like it, they, they they call this R naught, right? Which is like almost 2.5 to 4 which is compared to flu is a lot less than that. And so, uh, yeah, that's something you have to be worried about, how fast it infected and the mortality rate. And this coronavirus, the novel coronavirus 2019, has that potential. And so you do not want to compare with, um, uh, with common flu. That is wrong way. And I, I, I do dislike when media do that. You have to be objective about it. You have to look at the, you know, what's happening to China and that's what they should be reporting and because the data supports it. But what they should not be uh, saying in the media is that it's not, you know, common flu is more and more dangerous. That is not what you should be saying. In fact, if you look at the actual uh, uh, virus itself, the infection, it's very contagious and as a mortality rate is very high. So be aware of that and just be cautious, okay? Continue on to, to uh, you know, to, to be objective and be prepared and just, you know, again, have uh, just like any uh, storm coming, uh, like a winter storm uh, emergency, you should always have at least two weeks worth of food and, and water. God be with you and may Lord uh, Jesus bless you and your family. Thanks for watching EducateTube.com. The next update I will do probably a week from now. I don't want to be uh, dwelling too much on this uh, stats. Um, I think you should just try to focus on your family and uh, be just be alert, all right? Again.